Welcome everyone to the SMC Project 2.0. G'day everyone and welcome back to another beautiful day here in Australia. I'll tell you what, this weather is starting to come through really nice the past few uh, few weeks and it's given me the opportunity to uh, do some imaging, especially of the SMC project. But that did take a slight pause. I did spend one night capturing that comet. Yes, Comet 2020 V2 ZTF. It was passing NGC 300. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll make a link to it at the end of the uh, end of this video for you guys to watch if you want to, or in the description below. And I'm really happy with how that image turned out. It was an absolute challenge. Uh, firstly, because I don't do a lot of comet imaging, um, purely because when there's a beautiful comet hanging around, it's normally the northern hemisphere that gets the uh, all the joy, and us here in the southern hemisphere, not so much. But with this one. As it was passing NGC 300, it was uh, actually quite high in the night sky, so it made for perfect imaging. And not only that, the challenge with that image is that I have to stack a short amount of subs to capture the nice comet without it being too blurred out from uh, using a larger um, sub stack. And then using that larger sub stack, and then integrating the hydrogen alpha in for the galaxy uh, and the luminance as well. It was uh, it was it was a cool challenge, and I think the image came out pretty good. Anyway, enough about uh, Comet 2020 V2 ZTF and NGC 300. We are imaging the SMC project, and we are up to panel. We have captured sorry seven panels, seven out of twelve. So this is coming along quite nicely. And I always say it's a harder image to put together than the comet image. Um, there's just a lot of a lot going on, so it's going to take a lot of time to finish the actual color version of that image. So I'm, at the moment, I'm just doing the luminance uh, data, so we can sort of get a rough idea and see what's sort of happening uh, within the frame. Also, the background extraction is something that's a bit challenging for me, uh, but we're working on it and. Uh, and that's all we can do is work on our images, improve, and hopefully, uh, you know, they just keep getting better and better and better. So, yeah, we're going to capture the next panel tonight and, uh, and add that to our uh, collection. Now, where? I don't know because I've been capturing random panels from all over the place. Um, so, I don't know where this one's going to be. It's a bit of a surprise. Don't know if it's just pretty much going to be a blank canvas with some stars or whether we're going to have a little bit of nebulosity or whether we're going to have some sort of star cluster or whether I don't know but that's part of the uh, part of the fun of uh, astro imaging sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get all right well let's just wait for it to get a bit darker and get imaging on 4am and the imaging session it's gone well but it hasn't gone too well uh, there was a moment there throughout the changing of the filters where the sequencing goes out of whack and I still haven't quite got it right in Nina um, I'm not too sure if there's a bug there uh, or what it is but the first part of the uh, imaging session will go really well. The synchronized weights will work. Um, everything will be fine. And then the moment it's finished that imaging session, so the RGB imaging session, 
and then it goes on to the next section, which is the um, uh, the changing of the um, filters and, and everything else like that. It it doesn't wait anymore. The synchronized weights don't work. It just bypasses it all. I don't know why it does that. Um, I don't know if it's a thing within Nina that the synchronization type stuff between instances is um, is a, a thing that it works, but it doesn't work. Like it's just a, it's just there, but it doesn't fully do what maybe it's meant to do. Um, yeah, so hopefully uh, either it's something I'm doing wrong, or it's you know hopefully something that gets fixed in the future. Um, with a bit of luck. I'd love to know if anyone actually uses uh, Sequence Generator Pro or something like that for um, their imaging session or multiple instances imaging sessions and if they have any issues with that. Um, I really love Nina, I really want to stick with Nina, uh, but I might have to alter the way things are done. Um, so that way in the first part of the imaging session the synchronization all works once it's finished the RGB session changes the filters, maybe goes straight into an imaging session, and then at the end again, I go into my flat frames um, for the you know, narrow band and the luminance frames. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I mean, once I manually sorted all that out um, and got imaging, um, we've been moving pretty good. It's another, yeah, beautiful night, incredibly still. Orion is almost right above me now so it's not going to be long um, around Christmas I'll have to start imaging our Ryan and uh, yeah we'd like to also get some shots on the uh, the Seven Sisters as well um, I really would like to do that this year I haven't shot the Seven Sisters in a long time and uh, it'll be interesting to see um, how it all goes anyway We're just about done for uh, tonight's imaging session, so uh, I'm going to probably jump back into bed and maybe get a couple more hours of sleep before the sun rises. Alright, well I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if, you've, if this is the first video you've seen, please check out some of my others. And if you like them, don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And until next time, take it easy. See you.